Somebody shout hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. You will experience the touch of the Lord tonight in the name of Jesus. At this point, we want to move on in our program for tonight. And I want each and every one of us to please give honor to whom honor is due. We're going to rise up on our feet. Every one of us, please let's rise up on our feet as we welcome even to the pulpit a man of God that has touched life for over 20 years. Talking about the guest minister, one of our guest ministers for tonight in the presence of Reverend Paul Olanio. Somebody shout yeah, hallelujah. He's the senior pastor of the Alabaster Church, also known as Message of Light Gospel. He has been a full-time preacher for over 20 years with a heart for the revelation of the power of God through the teaching of God's word. An evangelist and a prophet with the evidence of the power of the Holy Spirit in his ministry. Our daddy in the Lord Reverend Alaniyo exhausts the ministry of the word far and above the gifts he has graciously been bestowed on him by the word of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's jam our hands together for the Lord as we invite to the pulpit. Reverend Paul. Olaniyo. Please, we can do better. So, Paul's hand is still just standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is anyone excited in the church tonight? With a shout unto the Lord and say, God is good. Somebody shout, God is good. Can I hear it one more time? Yes. God is good. Please, I want you to be on that keyboard for me for five minutes. And I want to make humbly request that every one of us should lift up our hands and praise his name. Nobody knows his hour of visitation. And when the hour of visitation comes, it comes with dynamic operations of the spirit. Tonight, the Lord is touching someone. He's helping someone. If your amen can be louder than that of others, that would be your testimony. In the name of Jesus. The first word of the Lord that comes to me on this altar is that henceforth you will not wear wilderness as a garment. Amen. I want people to shout now. I want you to respond to what I'm saying. And I want to declare. Everything about God is predicated on the power of his word. Henceforth, someone is hearing me. Someone is watching online. Someone just stepped inside. And this is the word of the Lord. That henceforth, you that you are watching, you will no longer wear wilderness as a garment. Amen. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness, I want you to be spiritual this evening. Say in the name of Jesus. I boldly confess. I, Reverend Paul. Henceforth. I will not wear wilderness. As a garment. No more. 
Never again. I declare into existence that I will not wear wilderness as a garment. Lift up your hand. The power of God is here. It depends on you now. The power of God is here. But it depends on you. The power of God is here. But it depends on your response to the power. The glory of God is here. It depends on your response to the glory. Lift up your hand once again and declare that I, Reverend Paul, I will no longer wear wilderness as a garment in the name of Jesus. I will no longer wear wilderness as a garment. It is no more me. I'm a new man in Christ. I boldly declare and I boldly confess that every step I take henceforth is in the right direction. My hands are not twisted. My legs are not twisted in the name of Jesus. By the hands of God, I am walking into divine abundance. In the name of Jesus. Can I hear a louder amen? Okay, now we're going to pray. Just play that keyboard one more time. I am going to declare that the word of the Lord. And you see, everything is predicated on the release of God's word. The word of God is light. The word of God is fire. The entrance of that word gives light. The word I speak, they are spirit and life. The I speak to every twisted hands. So that if you are spiritual tonight, you get it. I speak to every twisted hand. Twisted hands. I declare. Your twisted hands become lifted hands. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. When your harvest is ripe, your hands will not be twisted. I make a bold declaration to everyone hearing me. There is a release of God's word. I speak by the Calvary authority. And I declare that henceforth, when your harvest is ripe, your hands will not be twisted. I declare that in the name of Jesus, the works of your hands, God will take it to the next level. I declare. One more time. The works of your hand. 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 God will take the works of your hand to the next level. In the name of Jesus. I declare. From now on. I say from now on. Your prison experience is over. Oh my goodness. I say your prison experience is over. Because by the word of the Lord and by the release of prophetic henceforth I declare your hands will be stronger than chains. Your feet will be mightier than fetters. No hands of the enemy will be able to hinder you. God will take out the hands of hinderers. Where you are not permitted to rule, you will overrule. You will reign. You will shine. You will outshine. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare upon 
upon you today that the oil of grace upon your head it will take you ahead you will overcome lions you will subdue others whatever belongs to you that is in the whole of vipers that is in the whole of vipers I make a demand to be released in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus your portion will not end as a dream <laughs> your portion will not end as a dream your inheritance will not end as a nightmare I declare upon your life you will be steadfast in the right direction your hands will be mighty in glorious things in the name of Jesus I make a bold declaration your ears will not hear what will make you small your is okay Lift up your hands. Wa aman sata vara na shote. Wa ya mahakan to lavazu za brahamas kutaliga. Ba ya noza afa sota liba. Wa ya masatali mahakun taliga zuza. Wa ra safari ya mas kutaliba. Bukwe yi tengbo unto mu yi kere. Everyone, the voice that is belittling you. The voice that is belittling you. Let it hide in your life. Let it disappear from your life. You have had enough that has made you small. Begin to hear new things. New things. New things. New thing. New thing. New thing. Your life will not be a game of unrighteousness. It will help you. It will strengthen you. It will strengthen you. You will not be the same. And everybody shout a louder amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Tony <laughs> I wanted to listen to what I want to say. Mofeko, try to sing, cause I'm offended. Kinshio, Owe, Ni, Yonikoni, Soro. It's only the voice of human being that speaks. 
The life of a man speaks. Aye, you no sorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's have our seat for a few Hallelujah. times. I'm and I have a few minutes to pray. What is in my mind this evening? Is to make a declaration of what God is about to do. I want to appreciate our Father in the Lord for the privilege of access. I want to celebrate him and mom. I want to say thank you for the privilege given me to be here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is nothing that Satan attacks like a man's focus. And when the focus of a man is attacked, it becomes a broken destiny. Something new. Something new. It's about to happen. Uh, it's only that uh, daddy that says amen. Something new is about to happen. And it's happening already. In the name of Jesus. There are two things that defines a man. Problem. And promise. Problem. And promise. What defines a man can either be a problem or a promise. For Abraham, Abraham, it was defined by the promise. For Judas, Judas, it was defined by problem. It therefore means that all the intentions of the enemy is to describe a man by the problem he faces. The essence why God makes a promise for us so that our description will be within the context of the promise. Because the promise of God, there are yes and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody say hallelujah. Hey, you got something, hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> you must understand that God is already moving. Oh, yeah, come on. We along with him right now. The distribution of God's inheritance is taking place. Old things do not project laughter. Old things. Do not project laughter. It therefore means that if laughter will come, God uses new thing to project a man's laughter. There are different dimensions of laughter. But one of the highest expressions of laughter is when God does a new thing. I therefore speak to someone this evening that the implication of this meeting is this that God will project new laughter into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. A louder amen. Isaiah 42 verse 9. I'm going to read three scriptures. The first one we read is Isaiah 42, verse 9. Plus, I want you to help me project that. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare before the spring forth, I tell you of them. Sorry. This is the intention of God. Every time God wants to do something new, He declares them into existence. Because the nature of God is that God is spirit. And because God is spirit, the nature of God is He has the ability to declare things before it happens. 
The realm of the spirit and the realm of time are two contrast realms. Everything you will become in life, you have already been in the spirit. Everything a man ever needs has been uploaded in the spirit realm. But the it, the capacity you have determines your download level. A child that is born, who is, happens to be a baby girl, is a grandmother already in God's sight. Therefore, potentially, Potentially, is a grandmother, but practically is a child. A 16-year-old girl that God give you access to the realm of the spirit to see what is ahead of you. What is the realm of the spirit? The realm of the spirit is the factory of eternity. <laughs> Everything you will be, you have been. Nothing of you surprises God. So everything about a man has been fully uploaded. It doesn't take you prayerful life to have a dream. Whether you are prayerful or not, dreams will come as an important access to the divine information. But where prayer is important is that it creates the ability to download what is already uploaded. Whether you pray or you don't pray, destiny has been decided. But the capacity you have is to download according to your capacity. So God says, before it happens, I declare them into existence. And I want to pray. This is prophecy. God waiting for me in my future. Two things defines a man. A problem and promise. When you have a promise, either you realize or not, Satan set a boundary to contain the promise. Can you lift up your right hand? I destroy spirit of containment over your life. And you are not hearing me. I say I destroy spirit of containment. There are forces that contain promises. So we must have this understanding that new things project laughter. Now, there are four important information I want to share to you as regard this teaching. God is not a man. When you hear something like, God is not a man. What do you think the Bible is saying? God is not a man means it's not limited by time, space, and matter. God is timeless in nature. But he time himself when he wants to manifest. Time is not superior to him. Because his name is Elohim. Elohim means self-existence God. Because he is self-existent. He is older than life. Older than heaven. Stronger than fire. Now one thing about God is that he does not even know how to end himself. 
beginning. It is from the beginning. Before the calendar. Before angels. Before all forces. Came into existence. He had been. And forever. It will ever be. So time is only given us as a portion. As a portion through which we can relate with him. Then we can go back to eternity. He is eternity personified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's one of the nature of God. If somebody has gone through a lot of things for 50 years, God is spirit. He doesn't understand time. If you pray for 50 hours, it doesn't move him. A spirit is superior to time. And every time we are spiritual, we exercise dominion over time. Can I prophesy to you? I am not shouting, God gives me authority. I declare, let the power of God rule over contention that you are facing within the sphere of time. If that amen can be loudest, let the miracle begin now. If that amen can be loudest, receive a testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is limitless. He supplies according to his riches. And each time God wants to demonstrate his reality, he does something new. Why will he do something new? Each time he does something new, it's an introduction to his reality. Moses said, Moses, okay. if you guys die ordinary deaths, you wouldn't value me as a man of God. And he declares something new against them. The Bible says for the first time, the heart opened its mouth and swallowed Korra Data Abira. So if you are writing something today, each time God does something new, it's an introduction to his reality. God is powerful. I, I wish people understand the revelation of this God. Once in a while, he wants you to come to the end of your route. And when you come to the end of your road, then he makes a way in the wilderness. Why must he do something new? Angels are not new to God. But God is new to them. Can I explain to you the protocol of the cherubim in heaven? According to scripture here, there are seven types of angels in heaven. The highest angel is seraphim. Who are seraphim? Seraphim are the angels that announce the glory of God. The Bible calls them flaming angels. In the book of Psalm 104, who makes his angels spirit is ministers flame of fire. Those ministers are not pastors. They are the angel of his presence who are seraphim. According to Isaiah chapter 6, the seraphim are the angels that fly above the throne. And they say, holy, holy, holy. They announce the new move of God in heaven. Then followed by cherubim. 
the cherubim are the angels that surround the throne. And with their wings through which they fly. And they have two wings that covers their face. And there are two wings that covers their feet. The revelation of cherubim is because they are the one that regulate the flaming glory of God so that it will not consume other angels that are lesser in rank. They protect the throne. Because the glory of God is a burning glory. So when they surround the throne of God, they reduce the intensity of that fire. That was the plan God had in the book of Exodus. So that when the high priest enter into the most holy place, there are two angels facing each other and then they stretch their wings so that the glory that proceeds from the inner place it will be regulated for people to be able to receive. The Bible now says whether they there are thrones, principalities, powers, all things were made by him and for him. Then the third ranking angel is what we call archangels. The archangels they are the chief angels. And these angels are very important to God's decision making. Now, what, why am I saying all this to you? God is so powerful. But our revelation limits him. The revelation of God you have is your limitation to the reality of that God. Somebody can endure sickness for 15 years. Yes. And somebody can say over my dead body. He is the God for those who wait. And he's the God for those who contend for their miracles. And I want to tell you tonight that every time God does something new is an introduction to the reality of God. And I want to declare in the name of Jesus that the seal that the enemy has placed upon you that does not give you access to understanding of God's power it is removed now oh my goodness somebody is not saying amen it is removed now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I speak to us this morning this evening for your sake the word became flesh how many of you know that God Jesus is Lord in seven dimensions incarnate Lord crucified Lord buried Lord ascended Lord seated Lord coming Lord in every phase of him is Lord. His name is Jesus. His office is Lord. Mary gave birth to him as Jesus. Holy Ghost gave birth to him as Christ. The grave released him as Lord. What are we talking about today? I'm talking about the absoluteness of God's divine authority. When God speaks there are no recommended voices anymore he is so strong viable and powerful that when God challenges the trouble you go through the trouble recognizes him as Lord. He is the final authority over everything you are going through. The Bible says in all this so that he can have preeminence. From the beginning, there are three things that bear witness in heaven. The Father, Baba, the Word, Oro, and the Spirit. And out of them, the Word became flesh. 
and dwell among us we beheld the glory as of only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth what is grace ability what is truth reality when you come into Christ you come into divine ability you experience divine reality I don't care what you are going through the word that became flesh has enough glory to consume your cancer to consume diabetes to consume trouble somebody shout Jesus the world became flesh. Now, let, let, let me begin to say this to you. When the world became flesh, that is the process the Bible refers to as incarnation. And because it became flesh, anything that is in the bodily form must have a name. And that's why there is a name that is given unto him. That is above every other. I want to tell you that Christ is powerful. A louder amen. Amila. A louder amen. Amila. A new thing is an introduction to the absoluteness of God's authority. When God does something new, the news spreads. Why? Because new thing is part. Do you know that even angel one 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 of these one there was a time God took me to heaven. Even the angels, they are always looking at God as a wonder. Because it's new. Is new. Oh my goodness, somebody say it's new. So the angels of his presence, when they behold him, they become what they see. By the time they become what they see, and they behold him again, he has changed dimension. And they become what they say. What you think, that is why the Bible says, as we behold him with an unveiled face like in a glass, we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory by the Spirit of God. You are beholding him in the word now. You are beholding him in revelation. Revelation is giving you access to the reality of the world. Something new is happening. Chains are broken now. Oh my goodness, can I hear it? Chains are broken now. Can I hear me? Chains are broken now. My goodness, I said, chains are broken now. In the name of Jesus, God is not a man. Do you know the meaning of God? G-O-D, giver of divine things. Giver of what? Can you say it one more time? Give her of who? And you don't know, second Peter 1 3 says divine power has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. Something new is happening. Oh my goodness, do I have a witness in the house? I'm communicating life into your spirit. Your born again spirit receive life. New things emerge in your life. No more wilderness experience. One of the misconceptions about wilderness is that when you say wilderness, wilderness is actually a place where God takes over everything you do not. When the Israelites were in the wilderness, they did nothing. God fed them morning, afternoon, evening, 40 years, enjoying a wolf. If you serve him, understand him, and you have access to divine revelation of God, 
In the midst of famine, you will flourish. In the name of Jesus. My second scripture, Judges 15, 13 to 15. I want to that your ori kerin ti logun eseketa la si eseketa I want to I want to share this this is my text for this teaching I will just round up because of time My my text is so ni tori akoko wa Now give me that scriptures and I want to show you something E je ki ri bibeli yi mo fe fin kokon wa I told you that a man can be defined either by promise or a problem Mo so fun wi pe isoro le juwe eyan be na ni le ri le juwe eyan So the promise that was upon Samson that he will remain a Nazarene till the day of his death Toyin na ile ri to wa lori Samson pe yo je Nazareth titi dojo ko re Till the day of his death Titi dojo iko re So shaving up the ear is not going to be an end of his story Bi won se wa ge run re ye ye o kin se o kun rin ajo Because a promise Ni to ri pe ile ri has been defined and it has been fixed. So let's look at scripture right now. Judges 15, 13. And they spake unto him saying, No, but we will bind thee fast, deliver thee into their hands, but surely we will not kill thee. They bound him with two new cord and brought him up from the rock. The next verse 14. Verse 14. And when he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. They shouted against him, and the Spirit, they shouted against him, and then the Spirit took over. And I want to prophesy upon ten people, the power that shouts you down, each time you take a step, or each time you want to take a step, power that shouts you down, that power is broken tonight. There is always something within our spirit. When there are strange voices that wants to intimidate us. There is a realm of divine aggression on the inside. They shouted him, at him. And then the spirit of God took over. Now, let's look at verse 15. The spirit of God took over verse 15. And he found a new jawbone of an ass. Put forth his hand. Oh, no worry. Took it. And slew a thousand men therewith. What is that support? What does, what does that mean? He found a new jawbone of an ass. It doesn't matter what you are going through. Revelation knowledge of Christ will always teach you what to do. Practically, a jawbone of an ass couldn't slew a thousand Philistines. But already the Spirit of God was upon him. And then the Spirit of God led him to the jawbone. And the Bible says that jawbone was a new jawbone. When God is a about to do something new in your life there are new revelations now when we we'll talk about revelation revelation is the walking knowledge of truth there is difference between knowledge and truth Knowledge points you to truth. Truth is the end of knowledge. So you shall know the truth. Then the truth will set you free. What is this truth? The reality of God. It was God that led him to the jawbone. Against the skillfulness of a soldier. That is a scripture. So the Bible says, whatever you lay your hands upon shall, shall prosper. And I want to pray for you. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creation. Revelation 
is here. Revelation is here. Revelation is here. Is a means. Is an entering point into new things in life. Oh no! Now we will let you know what to do. When you are not entering new dimensions of God, it shows you have a spirit of religion. Religion fights against new things. Because religious wants to maintain a status quo. So a new thing is a means of God introducing himself into the reality. Now let's look at this. Every new thing that God does, he does it for his own glory. The word glory means kabod. It means heaviness. Your spirit is a cylinder. Then the glory of God is like a gas. When a cylinder is filled up, what does it become? It becomes what? It becomes heavy. How many of you believe that? When you fill your cylinder, it becomes heavy. That heaviness is what the Bible refers to as kabod. The glory of God is God's heaviness. It is the substance of God's reality. That glory of God is the oxygen for our born again spirit. Shortage of the glory. Oh, 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 go we will be gasping for breath. The presence of God can be in this place. And it does not manifest. But when the glory of God comes, it exposes the presence of God that is hidden in our midst without knowledge. Because the Bible says, where two or three people gather together, I am in their midst. God's presence can be in a church and it's not moving. Except people get into revelation. And they are led by the Holy Spirit to do certain things by the leading of the Spirit. So that the presence that is in our midst that has been hidden for months can be revealed. We carry this presence in different measures. The presence of God carries velocity and it carries Intensity. Intensity is the thickness of God's presence. Velocity is the speed of accomplishment. God can do something within two minutes you have been trusting God for for a very long time because two things define his presence, intensity and velocity. I prophesy upon your life no matter how stubborn your bondage and the sound of my voice they are broken now the speed of accomplishing divine things it doesn't take God seconds to do things it doesn't take God God, one, 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 one year my mother had arthritis and then I was growing up I had arthritis and, and I'm healing evangelists and then the pains becomes very excruciating. So, so, I said, Father, can you heal me? He said, it's my pleasure to heal you. I said, then heal me. Then he said, sleep. And I slept. And he sent an angel. The angel asked me to stretch forth my left leg. Oh, that's when I know that this, our body, there are keys that unlocks this body. My knee was open and they brought out a white worm. 
Very long white worm. And when the white worm was taken away, on the spot I'm healed. The glory of God is here. You are healed on the spot. Please, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to those who understand this revelation. You are healed on the spot. You are rescued on the spot. You are, the on the spot. You are delivered on the spot. Let the revelations of God becomes new within your spirit. You are walking out of indebtedness, walking out of impossibility. God is leading you into a new project, into a new levels, into a new realms, into a new work. The hand of the Lord rests upon you. The glory of God shines upon you. Somebody shout Amen! God's glory oh God, uh, is the now now let me say this to you with all seriousness you for how many of you know that there are two scriptures that look so contradictory but they are not my glory will I not share with any man oh God, me, 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 me. then in John 17 verse 22 verse 22 the glory the Father has given me oh God, Baba, I have given them now there, are, there is a difference between the presence of God and the person of God he doesn't share the glory of his person but he shares the glory of his presence and that glory is as tangible as God he has not left the throne but his glory is an errant spirit that represents the complexity and the complexity of God the glory of God is the power of his complexity but revelation simplifies the complexity of God. So by revelation, by revelation, by revelation, we simplify the complexity of God by revelation. He doesn't leave the throne, but the glory that is upon your head is as tangible as God. In theology, we call it theophany. What does that mean? It means that he is on the throne. But he has an errant spirit. And that errant spirit proceeds from him to represent the complexity of God in, in the realm of time. How do you explain the woman with the issue of blood? How do you explain the paralytic man? How do you explain somebody who had been there for 38 years waiting for the moving of water the stirring of water and Jesus went there and he took the man out of queue do you want to be made well he said sir I have no man if your revelation is not beyond man you will be offended at men he said arise take up your bed Walk. Three revelations in glory. If you are met, you know, go. The first thing the glory of God does is awakening. Arise. 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 The Bible says in Isaiah 16. Arise. Shine. Thousands are rising, few are shining. When you rise, you rise in destiny. But when you shine, you shine in glory. Arise. Take up your bed for 38 years. For God, your God, don't make it to God. That bed has been sponsoring that man. But for the first time, what sponsored him? It took over. Do you know after tonight, those who sponsor you, you will sponsor them. Do you know you are going to take your bed? You will walk out of that position. Walk out of that poverty. Walk out of impossibility. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Finally. God is not a man. That he should lie. He's not the son of man. 
that he should repent. As he said it, shall he not do it? As he spoken it, shall he not bring it to pass? Everything you call future, to God is a past he has perfected. The revelation of predestination, everything you will be, you have been. It has been uploaded in the realm of the Each time you pray, you download what has been uploaded. Something new is happening. Lift up your hands tonight. And say, Father, you persevere. Touch me one more time. Grant me understanding. Let something new break out. Let it break forth. Let it break forth. I'm breaking forth yeah, on the right side, yeah, on the left side, yeah, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Louder, amen. amen. Father, we thank you tonight for the word for and we pray and I speak it that henceforth you will no longer wear wilderness as a garment. It will help you. It will take you further. It will heal you. It will empower you. You will receive illumination. The mercy of God will illustrate his compassion. It is done. And somebody shout amen.